tells. See, there is those issues to consider. I'm not being flippant making that comment. That is a reality. <coughs> if people in big numbers, you know, we don't care about, I'm not saying for one second that that is your view. But if people are to do that, you've got to understand, stupid, then, I will, but those, but those comments so were made. Thing to say. Oh, no. This is, and, and, and where we appear to be moving towards here is, it's not for me to speak for everyone, but the, the, the impression that I'm getting based on your reaction is, certainly pleases me. If we're all agreed that response times are important, then we are all agreed. I don't know, that, that, is my, that, is my, that is my position. And that's my recommendation to the authority. The issue comes, the issue becomes, therefore, is a planning issue. Because our problem is, if it isn't Sorghum Massey Road, then we don't have an alternative at this time that's not, not in the green belt. That's not in the green belt. We can't compulsory purchase. Now, if anything comes available to us in the meanwhile, then clearly we would absolutely consider that. Let me be clear, because anywhere in the midpoint, on this side of the midpoint, works from an operational response perspective. But as it stands, we don't have any other, um, we don't have any other alternative at this time. That's, that's not in the Excuse me, what, if what, keeping up to open, not still keeping you the response time. I'll exactly. like come to that, I'll come to that, I'll come to that for you. Right, move us on the next slide, Jack. And I'll move on again, I've explained this. <laughs> move on one more, please. Right, in terms of the, in terms of incidents, like, right, the reason I've got this slide in is because Historically, we, we, we always get asked questions about incident numbers. Like we always get asked questions. Understand that, understand why people want to know about incidents. Got to make it clear, these figures are for 2013-14. Like we do now have a full year's data for 14-15, but that, that only became available to us at the beginning of April. So I've used the figures, very little difference in truth in the, in the, uh, the overall figures in terms, in terms of the response times. We can share them if people want them, absolutely share them. What we've done is we've stuck with what is in the, the consultation documentation to remain consistent. But I'm making it clear, these figures are for 13 and 14. The numbers of incidents across Merseyside has reduced significantly over the last decade. That hasn't happened by accident. That's happened because we've, we're, we've undertaken very extensive proactive intervention work to manage incidents down, whether that be fires in the home, road traffic collisions, Anti-social small fires and automatic fire alarm actuations have massively reduced the numbers of, of incidents. Being victims of our own success, absolutely that's the, the case. Ups and uh, incidents have reduced nearly 50%, West Kirby's by sort of about 25%. There's always been a historic difference in, in overall incidents <coughs> between Upton and West Kirby, by and large explained by the difference in anti-social small fires and the uh, unwanted fire signals predominantly uh, related to, to our park. In terms of life risk incidents, which is what we are concerned with, that's what our response times relate to. In terms of the life risk incidents, they're not dissimilar in two between the two station areas. They're not really dissimilar anywhere across Merseyside in terms of our life risk incidents. You can see on the fatalities, two accidental fire deaths, one RTC fatality in Upton's area, and uh, the think one and one on West Kirby's area over the uh, same period. Very little difference in truth. In my professional view, it matters not one jot what <coughs> happened in the past, because that's happened. It's what might happen in the future is what I'm concerned about. And as long as there's people, there is risk. So as long as there's people, there will be fires, <coughs> road traffic collisions, and other emergencies. It doesn't really matter how many incidents occur on the station, the station area. It moves on, please, Jim. <coughs> in terms of the response implications, just to, uh, to cover the point that the lady raised there, Mercy, we do have a 10 minute response standard. That's got nothing to do with us taking 10 minutes to get anywhere. 
That is solely for our fire control mobilising officer. Because when we moved down from having, back in 2010, 42 fire engines, down to 28 and now down to 24, on any given day, we could have four fire engines or more in our training academy. <coughs> doing the live, live BA training and such like, the sort of things you can't do anywhere else because it's, it's live, heat and smoke, it's burning, you can't do that uh, anywhere <coughs> other, than, other, than, other than Crockster. And you could have any number, you could maybe up to four pumps unavailable through the fact that we simply just haven't got the staff to clear them anymore. So very quickly, we're down potentially to 20 fire engines. Now if we get two or three incidents on the go at our Merseyside, so uh, an ordinary house fire, two fire engines, house fire with persons reporting, <coughs> three fire engines, road traffic collision, two fire engines, search and rescue team. Very quickly we can drop our numbers down close to having ten fire engines available. And if we've only got ten fire engines, we might only for a short period of time, but if we've only got ten appliances available, then what our mobilising officer does is cover ten key locations which are Southport, Formby, Brutal Netherton, Kirby, St. Helens, Highton, Speed Garston, <coughs> Old Swan, Bromble and Upton. Because if you cover those 10 locations, you can get anywhere on Merseyside in 10 minutes on 90% of occasions based on the incident numbers. It's got nothing to do with us wanting to take 10 minutes to get anywhere. Our average response time to a live first incident is 5 minutes and 24 seconds across Merseyside. They are some of the fastest response times in the country and we want to keep it that way. Because I'm going to show you a very short video in a second which shows you how quickly, it's only two and a half minutes, but you'll see how quickly a fire can develop. We we'll use a fire, we we'll use that rather than RTC or something of that nature. Okay? If the national average. Can we skip the video? If you want, if you, if you, if you all accept, yeah. 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 Right, do we all accept that response times are important? Yeah. Yes. Right, fine. Do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in a second. At the end, I'll answer the questions. Right, to be honest with you, if we've established that point, I've, there's probably, I will continue, but I'll do it very quickly now because we've achieved the, that's all I'm here to talk about is response times. If we've established that fact, then that is absolutely well, fine. Where so well, let, me, let me finish the presentation, but I'll certainly, certainly I'll skip the video. Time. Okay. Yeah. If, yeah. if we were to close, if we were to close West Kirby outright, the average response time based on last year's incident data to the West Kirby station area from Upton, because that is where the first fire engine would come from, would be 8 minutes 43 seconds, pardon me, compared to the 5 minutes and 20, 5.23, isn't it? It'd be quicker from Hatsville, though, wouldn't it? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It's through. It's a It's a hoy lake. It's a hoy lake in Bells. West Kirby station way. area, which I'll show in a minute, I'll show you where West Kirby station area covers. Heswell is not quick, it would only be quicker to Station Road, beyond that up to the, up to the quicker to get to where, anywhere else, even in, uh, in Caldy, based on the, on the run times. Okay. The figures here are, are all in your, they're all in your pack, so if you want me to skip them, I can move over that, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, we'll skip this, this is a video. Here's your station areas, which, I'm not sure how well you can see here. Okay, if you point the, that's West Kirby's, if I can, and if you allow me to do it, please. Just, uh, right. That's West Kirby's area, you know what I mean about covering the river day. That's Upton's area, so it stretches all the way over effectively to Beechwood, to Bidston, so it's effectively up the top, Eleanor Road, Viner Road is where the, the border is, up at Birkenhead. Birkenhead can get across there equally as quick as Upton can, for reasons which we'll be obvious to you. Up to where it's located now covers more of the will. Certainly if it's a 10 minute response, it covers the majority of West Kirby's area, but not all of it in 10 minutes. 10 minutes is much too long, much too long to be waiting for a response. If we move it, 7 minutes 24 to a dwelling fire. 
Our response figures include all life risk incidents. If the national figure included all life risk incidents, it would be a lot longer than seven minutes. Road traffic collisions typically take longer to get to, for reasons which probably be obvious to people. Right, the midpoint is, say, it is just about there, which is three lanes end. That's the ideal. However, as it stands, we can't. We have no powers of compulsory purchase. We have approached the landowners. We've had no response. We have tried, but we cannot do any more than we've done. We can't compulsory purchase land. As you'll see there, the sort of massive road site is here. That is as close as we're likely to get. Therefore, that gives us good response times into both of the station areas. The next slide is just it. I put it on only because it, uh, I thought it might be easier for people to see, because I realise it's, it's, it's probably going to be quite hard on what is still a, a relatively small screen. It just says the same thing, basically. I'm going to move on again, Jeff. And that's the, the piece of land that's in Whittle's ownership, so I'm sure everyone knows where that is. Just move on one, Jeff. That's Birkenhead Fire Station. I just put that on so you can see what, a, what, a, what one of our new build stations typically has looked like. Move it on, Jen, please. That is Patterdale Fire Station in Cumbria, which was built in the same programme as Birkenhead. Just put the next slide on. That is the engine house. Like, that is designed in such a way that, in truth, the majority of people don't know that's a fire station because it is designed to fit in with the area. The point that I'm making is, the point that I'm making is that if a fire station was to get built, then it would be designed in such a way that it fitted in very much with the area. If, if, if a fire, right, let me just, let me make a comment here. Those, those designs there are solely for the purposes of an indicative, that is what a fire station, no, in truth, that is no more relevant than the picture the bear can add. Because if we don't put something up, it's, oh, you know, what's it, we get criticised. If we put something up, that's a monstrosity, we get criticised. Understand that completely. We can't win whatever we do. It is there for indicative purposes only. What it shows is, in relative scale is how you can sort of put it away from houses and so on and so forth. That is the, I'm not trying to sell any of this to you, I'm just saying, I'm trying to give you an indicative understanding of that's what it could look like. There's nothing more than that. The picture of Patterdale, like I said, that's in the lakes. People in Patterdale obviously know where it is, but if anyone's driving through, find it very difficult to find because it just doesn't look like a fire station. Does it still sound like the fire station? And that can be that can be designed in. That can be designed in. And clearly, that is what a public consultation in relation to a planning application would deal with. Like I said, this is only to do with response times. And it appears to me that we are all saying the same thing, and that's fine. Oh, because, yeah. right, sorry, on response times, are we not saying the no, same yeah, thing? We're not just yes, buying your response time well, and saying, that's the end of it, it's going to be over, and it's going to be No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, the purpose of this public consultation is only, only concerned with operational response. No, 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 and that's fine, that's fine, right? Anything else is a planning issue, which is... Ladies and gentlemen, we are very nearly at the end now, so... Last slide, last slide. We're on the last slide. We just, we just finished the last slide, please. Just summarise the, the last slide. <clears throat> Over the decade, over the last decade, the authorities had to manage significant budget challenges. We are at the point now where we can't keep all the fire stations open. That is a matter of fact. We have to do something. We have to do something. Okay, so it is either mergers or outright closures. It just depends on where those closures are going to be or what the mergers will be if indeed we went ahead. Mergers do result in the least impact on operational response. That is a fact. That is a fact. 
We have been awarded grant funding towards the cost of issuing the merger option if it goes ahead. So we do not incur additional revenue cost. It's a one-off spend, whereas the structural saving we make saves for each station about £900,000 a year ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. that, that makes the saving for us. This consultation, as I've, uh, as I've said on, on a number of occasions, is only concerned with operational response. That is what the Fire and Rescue Authority are statutorily required to consider. That is not to say that the Fire and Rescue Authority do not take heed of the fact that there will be undoubtedly huge public opposition to having a fire station in Sorghum Massey to go ahead. The authority clearly will consider that. But I've got to be clear, they don't have a statutory duty around planning issues. Their statutory duty is around public safety for everyone on Merseyside. Because if West Kirby closes, then the response times to West Kirby increase substantially more than if we have a station at Sorghum Massey. That is a matter of fact. It's not so that is a matter of fact. It's about 45 seconds. The planning period is about, uh, it's about two and a half minutes. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right, it's a matter of fact it's two and a half minutes. Based on our, based on our, right, we're about to West Kirby, you're talking about this. West Kirby, come this, a paid station area. Right, so it's about, no, it's not. No. It is, we've done it, you've timed it. Like, like, we've got our incident data, I, I would go on our incident data and our analysis, which is 99% accurate based on the predictions, and it's proven to be the methodology is there in your packs, and that is a matter of fact. I'm not even getting into an argument. Can these statistics? Okay. The planning issue, any planning issue, would be subject to a separate consultation. So if the Fire and Rescue Authority were to go ahead and submit a planning application, then that is the subject of a separate consultation, which people would then be able to object, not on the grounds of response times, because you know, if, if everyone is in agreement that we need to protect response times, we all recognise that. Sorry, we're not, I need to be clear. You're either, like, we either do recognise them now, or so we don't. Can I, can I just say, you need to move on, because you've laboured on this for too long. There's an alternative proposal to your response times, so please move on. Okay. Like, planning issue, this is a planning issue ultimately. If the authority would decide to go ahead, is there anybody the here from the planning in the council? No. Like we do have David Armstrong is here from the council. No. David, da David is an officer. Is that clear? David is an officer. He's, <laughs> and David has said uh, he's not a planning. Well, do you want to speak for yourself, David? No. I'm David Armstrong. I'm normally based in the children's department. I'm also responsible. I'm also. I'm not going to shout over people. I'm also responsible for the council's assets, and I've been involved in this process from the start. Part of the feedback from the <coughs> meetings, and part of the feedback was that there was criticism that nobody from the council came to listen, even though it's a fire authority meeting. I volunteered to say I'll go to this set of meetings and I'll actually listen. As has been pointed out, we're in a period of purging before the election, which places very tight restrictions on what I can say as an officer. What I would say is I attended with Dan the meeting that we took place with the Soviet Massive Residence Group in the pub a few weeks ago, and I found that really helpful to listen. Clearly I've come to listen to this debate tonight, and I'll go to the other two meetings as well. I'm not, I'm completely not involved in the planning department. I could have, I could have brought an officer from the planning department. But that was, well, actually, no, that would not be appropriate, because, because the officer could well end up writing a planning report for this matter, it's inappropriate, therefore, for them to take can can one 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 one
Special thanks to everyone being so patient. I've got the chance to ask questions and make points. Uh, if you signal, you want to. Try, try not to shout out. I know that, that you know, people are passionate about the, the issue and so on. Uh, I'll try and get around as many people as possible. I would ask you that you try and make your points as succinctly and neatly as possible, just to try and give as many people as possible a chance. So if we start with gentlemen, then you can First of all, thanks for coming down to this meeting tonight. And uh, I just want to make a few points. I understand the green belt issues fully and I support them. However, my objections are based on more practicalities. I've been associated with the fire service since 1953. My family were in it. I've still got friends and relatives in. And I myself uh, was a paramedic in this area. I know the ups and downs and the idiosyncrasies of all these roads around here. What I would suggest is the fire station being built here anyway is not a good idea for a number of reasons. It will affect the response times. Now something uh, Dan said earlier on about uh, the industrialisation of the area, you're right, I've witnessed, witnessed it as many of us have, how it's changed over the years. But West Kirby has never been an industrialised area. And so therefore your argument to cut down the station there wouldn't really stand up. What I'm saying is here, that, and we all live in this area, if you put the fire station down there, there are a number of practical reasons why it's not a good idea. First off, if you close West Kirby, it is going to increase the response times. I mean, if we think about the likes of Banks Road, uh, or even Hoylake, uh, where they've got uh, hotels on it now, from the current fire station to, ba uh, to Banks Road, uh, for instance, uh, that would be a couple of minutes. If you had to make that same journey from here, now I'm talking now in good weather, you're still talking about seven or eight minutes. Now bear this in mind, I've done this, I've been there and worn the t-shirt, not in a fire engine, in an ambulance. If you were to leave here in bad weather, snow, hail, or water, it floods down by China Farm Lane. Yeah. So yeah. you have to go the other thing is, if you get a fire call around about 9 o'clock in the morning, and as you, if you get a fire call, then most people know it's gridlock. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a point about traffic, congestion, and response time. So, if I get down to pick up on that specifically. Okay, well, I've, I'm, try, I'm trying to do this quickly. I'm you trying to give you the practical reasons, but I'm missing them. You, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't go through Pump Lane because it's, it's single traffic, particularly when the golf's on, you never get a fire engine through there. If you go up to Black Horse Hill and then you go come down and go, it's too narrow for a fire engine to pass. Uh, I'm telling you now, to get fire engines there would increase the, uh, the uh, response time. But forget your response time. Think about the risk to the people in West Kirby are waiting for a fire engine to arrive. Mm. Now that's just a few of the issues. The other thing is before you... Sir, sir. If you can... If you can... If If you stop you there. No. Answer those first two questions and then we'll take it from there. In, in the, I think the um, I think the question you're asking is the uh, or, or you are questioning the um, response times. Response times. Assessments. And the issue that you, you've got to consider here is is, is a, a number of issues. I, I live over here now, so I have a reasonably good knowledge of this area. And the, the, the traffic conditions here are no worse than they are anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, again, any number of my colleagues who drive fire engines to believe well, I can to, get through, to get through the, to get through the uh, <laughs> take the strand in Liverpool, for example. This is a peninsula. No, this is a peninsula. Right. We're talking about the furthest point. The strand. You yeah. can drive. You can reach this, the strand from course, anywhere in Merseyside. This, of course, becomes academic in one sense because. Like what, what you appear to be saying is that we shouldn't close West Kirby. No, no. You're not, you didn't let me finish. You didn't know I was coming up with an alternative. I was giving you reasons not to close West Kirby 
uh, as you are thinking of doing so. I'm just uh, relocating here. Now, if you let me finish, you'll hear what I've got to say. If I can say this, I know this is not in your making. You, you have made the financial cuts, so we're having to live with it and all that. But what I am saying is this. What I'm saying here, this is the bad place to put it. And I'm outlining the reasons for this. I don't care if you live over here. I've lived here, over here all my life. So I know it like the back of my hand. I can tell you how long it takes to get from any given point on the world to any other given point on the world. Okay? So you and I are equal in that. So if you cook, if you go out of here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, what do you like you to face? What do you like you to face in the round <laughs> the question to ask or Right, I'm just laying down. It's not a question. If what I was trying to do, and you, you keep interrupting, so please allow me to finish. And, and then I'll finish this, you're up. If you get a fire call here around about 3 o'clock in the afternoon to West Kirby and you head off up there, you're likely to have to stop while 300 cattle cross the road. <laughs> 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 the point I'm trying to say, Dan, is I believe there may be another alternative. There may be other sites in the area. I don't know who you've spoken to. I know that they're developing sites down by Car Farm. So obviously, planners are quite happy for that, yeah. that to happen. There's also brickworks over there, brown fields, you know. Yeah, this I know. Is, uh, <coughs> you need to look at this. Uh, so, what, uh, so clear then, what you're saying is that we ought to look at all the things. I'm saying, yes. 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 And clearly, if, 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 it's, if there's anything between here and Three Lanes End, let me answer the question. Like the roads over here are no more challenging than anywhere else on Merseyside. Yeah, well, fact, yeah. We have like the response times that we're quoting up there, the average response times are based on actual incidents that have occurred, like, which will include the responses from Upton, the model, the, uh, the Upton response into West Kirby. The fact is, as it stands now, the second attendance to Shima West Kirby is available because unlike the ambulance service, Farm and Rescue Service predetermined attendances will, as I said previously, a house fire, let's say two fire engines, the person who called three fire engines. So up to the coming up here doing that now anyway. So we've got the actual response times and they are what I'm saying that they are. Well, my, so my, the average my, is, is, is eight minutes forty three. So now about that. the issue we the issue we have is the issue we have is, if, if we have to, let's, let us assume, say we have no compulsory purchase powers, and as it stands, the only available alternative, bearing in mind, we've already been through one public consultation that agrees with so we need to resolve this. This is, it's either we resolve it here now in the facility of three lanes end, or that's, that's it, we are there. Yeah, that's position one of the problems West Kirby. That, so, but, uh, but if we close, if West Kirby is closed, the fire engine's going to have to come from up to anywhere. It's going to have to go through all of those well, what as it is now. Is it what is it is Right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate everyone wants to make that point. We need to have some order so we can do it in the structure. That's yeah, I'm now stretching with me. That's giving another question. Yeah, phrase another point. So that we can take the One thing you have touched on, but only touched on, is the very clear trend downwards of the total incidents. And if you extrapolate from the figures that we've got here, and you said there were for 2014 and 2015 are not very similar. You are surely basing your whole sort of thesis on the fact that you have got the need to keep to those response times. But the numbers of fires and the numbers of incidents is going down very, very rapidly. Do you not think you could actually accommodate that by using up to There might only be one incident in Hoyland in West Kirby, but it may result in fatality. So we need to get there quickly. It doesn't matter how many incidents there have been. 
it's what might happen in the future. There are 26,000 people that live across the West Kirby Station area. Therefore, there is every, every likelihood, in fact it's an absolute certainty, that we will have another domestic property fire. And we will have an RTC, and we will have other emergencies there. So, if we're basing our response to Moulton, it will take us longer to get there than it would to get anywhere else in Merseyside. It doesn't matter one jot the number of incidents that have happened, the fact that incidents are going down. The fact of the matter is, as long as people live on the West Kirby Station area, and they will, there's going to be incidents. There is going to be incidents. We need, we need to be in a position to respond to them from a fixed location, because that's what we predicate our integrated risk management planning on is fire stations ultimately for the reasons I gave earlier on about the 10 key locations of which this would be one of them. We need to base it on, it's about run times, it's not about numbers of incidents. Just on run times now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. I just wanted that point before you drifted off at that result. The fact that you produced in the schematic, you coloured in ones, where you showed the differences from the sort of massive from the Upton ones now. The largest part of red that then jumped up on the second map that you did in the colour coding was actually all fields and golf courses. The, 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 the majority of that area that responded from the Upton side was still within your acceptable response times. It, it, and it wouldn't be down this lane, it would be straight past the top man and down the main yeah. road. Yeah. 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 It depends where the incident is. I understand, I understand that. I'm saying the majority the of the time, the, the response yeah. times would jump up, majority on your maps, the ones you supplied, were, were showing a massive red area, but it was mainly over based on the, the fields and the, and the golf course, not the houses. Based on the, based on the actual plotting of incidents, which, which for yeah. life risk incidents occurs predominantly, I clearly, that. in his, yeah, and that's yeah. what we're basing it on. That's what the figures are on, actual, actual incidents, actual run No, I know, I'm assuming you've produced these maps based on actual incidents as well. But where it's it's where the, the same thing. Yeah, but, got yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Exactly. Where that jumps up, but what okay, you get, in the response time, this red here is all fields. But what you get, so that's, that's what right. but what you get into, there out. is still a fact, there is still a good, there is still a good portion there of populous that's covered by eight to nine minute response when it could be six minutes or seven minutes. That's in that case, that's the lady in the check jacket that's been waiting some time. And then just a moment, next is the man in the blue jacket there, the lady in blue at the front, and the man in the check shirt. I've only been a sober massive resident for the last four years. My family have been living in sober massive for generations. I have been living in sober massive for generations. But up until four years ago, I lived on Allen Park Road, and right by Upton Fire Station. And the problems that the fire engines have getting out there, especially now with the, the motorway clothes mm -hmm. and things like that, are horrendous. People are saying that the access here and everything is bad. It's not as bad as Upton is at the moment. At the moment. But you've got people double parking going to the job centre. You've got people going into Sainsbury's. You've got people going up to the hospital. And the new estate where um, Champion Smart Club used to be is now uh, a lot of small units and people are going there. Getting out to our road, which is by opposite Champion Smart Plugs, you can spend 15 to 20 minutes longer trying to get out. No. <laughs> I have got a blue light on my car and things like this, but everybody saying that you know, there's things here and stuff like this. A lot of people that I speak to, because I'm not really in agreement with this going here, are calling me a NIMBY because I don't want it in my backyard and things yeah, like that. Yeah, not, no, I've had a fire station down the road for me for 30 years and that's not the reason. If you feel that that's the best place, you have to prove it to everybody that, that it's going to be the best place. It would take a lot of the get out of the park. If you give the Chief Fire Officer a chance to answer the question, then. He's hit the response times already. 
I can show through our response model based on the so based on actual incident data. It's most it comes down to this is a simple principle. If you can, if you've got two, you can't afford two. You can only have one. Where do you put it? I've got two shops that provide a commodity that no one else can deliver. But you can then no longer afford to, to open, operate two shops. What do you do? You put one in the middle. You put it in one area or the other. But you put it in the middle. Why don't you use the 850 grand you get from saving West Kirby and buy the car park next to the West Next to the Ladies and gentlemen, try and keep some order. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't hear the questions up from here. If you could all go one at a time. I know that questions are raised and everyone really cares about the issue, but we need to hear the questions so that we can answer them properly. Um, I think next up is the gentleman here in blue, and then it's back to the other lady. Good evening, Dan. My name is Peter Bold, Secretary of the Sorkin Massey Conservation Society. But tonight, I'm not going to. Tonight, I'm not going to talk about conservation. Tonight, I'm not going to talk about green belt. I'm going to talk about response. Over the last number of years, local authorities, fire authorities up and down the country have had your sort of problems. And believe you me, I don't envy you having to try and uh, answer this. But fire authorities have been able to um, come up with certain suggestions. And let's take one of the large authorities in the country, which is the West Midlands Fire Authority. Station Commander Ben Brooke said, Brigade response vehicles are an integral part of our core fleet. They're helping us to provide a more sophisticated, appropriate response to incidents according to the risk they pose. And they help to keep standard engines available for high-risk <coughs> jobs. By 2015, we'll have around two dozen BRVs in operation a more blended fleet will give us a greater flexibility and help to maintain our five-minute target response time to high-risk incidents. And BRVs will mean we can keep fire stations open with at least one standard fire engine based at each. He goes on to say, BRVs will help us cope with the unprecedented multi-million pound cuts in the money we get from the government. We have to meet the challenge of cuts while still delivering the best service we can for local communities. Could I ask you to consider that, Dan? Let me answer that question. What West Midlands said, uh, rather fortuitously, we're given a uh, flexibility to increase their council tax uh, by five pounds, one off, whereas we, we, uh, we were not. Um, which they did, which gave them a uh, fairly significant uplift in the fact that their population and in the tax base is uh, you know, it's quite large, a couple of million people in the West Mids. The point there is, is they are still able to keep all of their stations open and have the BRVs. A BRV is a Toyota Hilux, which has a uh, three-person crew, which it's not a great deal of use to you if you want to respond to a domestic property fire where persons are reported, or indeed for that matter, the road traffic collision. It's okay if you're going to pull out a small fire, but we don't have, we, we take a different view to small fires. We use the uh, very much, uh, we use our advocacy teams, work with police around things like uh, prosecutions, rubbish removals, and so forth. What the West Mids are, are in the rather luxurious position of being in is not having to close any of their stations so they can maintain all of their rescue pumps. And the reason they have the BRV simply is because they can afford them. We can't. And that is the difference. We are not in that position. We used to have targeted response vehicles, which we then turned the small fires units because that's actually exactly what it did. But if you look at the amount of calls that we've reduced over the last decade by about 50%, the majority of those are small fires. So in truth, instead of me paying to have three people on a Toyota Hilux, which I can't really send to any life risk incident, I'd rather protect the rescue pump and have five riders on an asset that I can send to any life risk incident. That's why that doesn't work here. But you could you have a BRV in West Exactly. To do what? You could sell to do what? Exactly. 
two different ones. The BRV turns up, right? This is maybe where I should have played the video. Because you'd have, you'd have been able to uh, you'd have been able to appreciate but the brigade response vehicle is for the small fires unit. Right? It's there for antisocial small fires that are external. Things like the type of which Upton historically have had higher numbers than West Kirby, but they haven't now particularly because we've managed to manage. A BRV, three person crew, right? or a rescue tender, five per and by the way, what would we pay for it with? Because it'd still be three more people on the ship than we can afford, because we can't afford pay it. Now. The so but in terms of which we're not allowed to do, which we're not allowed to do. But sorry. I say, let's, let's raise our council tax by right. in order to do that, In order to do that, we would require a referendum. The Fire and Rescue Authority would need to hold a referendum, which would cost about £2 million for us to do. And on that referendum, we would not be able to lobby for a month prior to the referendum taking place. And it would be a simple yes no answer. Are you prepared to increase your council tax by whatever percent? And for us, Five pound here, the percentage, what? Yeah, so it's into double figures. And the problem you have is trying to sell that to people around when you increase your council tax. I'm not convinced. Don't get me wrong, we may have to do that at some point. We may have to do it. We may well have to go for the referendum. But what you'd have to do, if you may, what you'd have to do is be in a position where you'd be advising the authority that you would have to effectively make cuts all over the Merseyside before you could realistically expect to convince the electorate, let's say in Liverpool, to vote for a council tax increase that only affected West Kennedy and Upton. So because, are you saying you would not I, 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 sorry, I just want to clarify, because he's going on a little bit about this. Are you saying then that you wouldn't consider any other options which would include the class At the end of the day, it's going to be a compromise. Professionally, I would not consider a BRV because it gives me absolutely nothing in terms of operational response. It gives me nothing. And it would have to be at the expense of it after to, to to crew a BRV with a three-person crew 24-7, I'd have to make another station a BRV station as well, thus losing another rescue pump, because you've still got to pay for them, haven't you? You've, you've got to pay for the people. I would be paying for an asset that I gave me absolutely nothing. Why did the other... Yeah, there was. I think, I think we've that. answered that question. There are an awful lot of hands up. Yeah. I appreciate people being patient. The lady in blue has been waiting for quite some time. Thank you. We've got the lander, the blue shirt. Uh, we've got uh, two ladies here. And I'll just... I'll just 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 My friends here, we all live slap bang opposite where you want to put the fire station. We don't want it. But I don't know whether anybody else knows here of the petition that's in West Kirby to save the fire station in West Kirby. Because the council have plans to build a multi-storey shopping mall and a multi-storey car park in West Kirby and that's why they want to get rid of the fire station. <laughs> <laughs> the petition is in West Kirby. <coughs> do, you, do you want me to respond to that? Yes, please. Like, we, um, we are the Fire and Rescue Authority, right, as I said previously. There has been no consideration whatsoever yet at the disposal of the site at West Kirby simply because no decision has been made. Now, in the event that we disposed of the station, then clearly we would in the first instance engage with Will because that's what we do responsibly. But in terms of any plans for our fire state, let, let's be clear, no decision has been made over it. No, but it yet. says on here that the council has a greater concourse, has had a greater concourse plan for at least seven years. I need to defer to David. It's here in the petition. <laughs>